Hi everyone, so we're still on our Dan River novel. We, I just finished chapter four uh, and what happened there was the girls tried to sneak into the showers to get um, to the boys or against the boys first and then the boys just took their stuff from their shower and then made a deal to uh, Farita to make dinner. But what she did was she made a lasagna but added a lot of garlic for the boys lasagna so i don't think they liked what she did and then so that ends chapter four so we're going to move on to chapter five and they're still talking about uh, white water rafting and i think most of the boys want to go to uh, grand canyon but then we don't have the they don't have the permit for that so i think they're gonna go to this san juan river which is kind of flat so i think that's the story that's where the story is gonna revolve on this chapter Al had been right about West Water. It knocked our socks off. We were still talking about it as we approached the San Juan River. Al was driving slowly because we were pulling the heavy trailer with gear for the 10 day float. We were suffering from white water withdrawal. Skull was awesome, Adam was saying. I'll never forget it, especially the look on everybody's face when we dropped into the hole. I was so busy paddling to notice, Rita shouted. Maybe if Redhead were the paddling instead of messing around, we wouldn't have gone into the hole. I'll miss it by a mile with his raft. Your mother, Adam teased. Rita reached out and grabbed Adam's t-shirt by the neck and pulled, his, uh, and pulled him toward her. Wears ordinary women's shoes, and if you say anything different, Al was rowing, not paddling, Troy said. You have more control with those oars than with a bunch of pad paddles. The part I liked best, Adam said merrily, was the room of doom. We almost got sucked in there the first day. Around and around you go and you can't get out. That would have been interesting, floating around all day with that dead cow. Pug was chorting, chortling. The part I liked best was when Heather went flying, like she was like she was shot off a gun and the look on her face when she was suddenly out in the river riding shotgun in the van heather rolled her head and groaned it wasn't a pleasant memory i'm sure when we dropped into that hole in skull rapid in westwater canyon the boat folded like a sandwich made from one slice of bread everybody crashed into each other and when the boat sprang back into its normal length it catapulted her out of way back to its normal length. It catapulted her out just the way Pug said, as if she'd been shot from a cannon. But that wasn't the worst part. She was caught in the hole and the white water recirculated her over and over before splitting her out, spitting her out. It must have felt like she was in a cross between a washing machine and a garbage disposal. <coughs> Excuse me. Once Heather was rescued, she lost it. Get real hysterical. It wasn't pretty to watch. Star and I helped settle her down. After that, the fear never left her eyes. That happened on her first day of West Water. And then she wouldn't get back onto the water for the second and third runs, no matter how much Al counseled her about getting back on the horse. She stayed by the van and waited for us. After our last run, though, the Westwater Canyon, we spent a couple of hours loading the boats with all the overnight gear we'd need for three more days of float, floating downstream all the way to Mob, Utah. Heather got back on board after Al promised it would be flat. It was pretty in stretches, with red cliffs along the river and snow-covered mountains in the background, but it was in white water. The van rumbled from Colorado to Utah, and we passed through the little towns in Monticello and Blanding. We were nearing the San Juan. It had taken days off and preparation back in base camp. Shopping from Al's shopping list, packing waterproof metal rocket boxes with a 10-day supply of food, stuffing all our personal gear into huge waterproof bags, and we were exhausted. We chattered for hours about West Water and whatever else came up. But the long drive had finally worn us down, and most people had nodded off. 
Troy's head was on my shoulder, and I wasn't very comfortable. But I was happy. Only Freddy and I were awake. Freddy, as never, as ever, was studying the countryside like it was the most interesting thing in the world. I looked around at the barren high desert of southeast Utah. I'd never been up this way with my dad. It didn't look very interesting to me until we drove off into Bluff, a tiny town with old buildings made out of blocks of redstone. The huge cottonwoods that lined the road wore their fall colors and it was warm. We stopped at a gas station and convenience store. It would be our last stop. The put-in for the San Juan River was only three miles away. Last chance for junk food, Adam said with a crazed look as he slapped himself onto consciousness. Let's go in there and clear them out. Pog took him seriously. Ten days on the river is a long time. It's gonna get grim out there. Adam added, people are gonna kill for a little bag of chips. Pog counted out his available funds. Fred and Star wandered him, looking around aimlessly. They never had any money. I tried loaning Star some, but there wasn't much she wanted from the material world. Mildly irritated, Al raised his voice. Keep in mind, we have three meals a day packed in the rocket boxes on the trailer. Nothing's gonna starve. Nobody's gonna starve. Tell you what, Troy said suddenly. Pick out whatever you want, everybody. I can cover it. Ooh, Troy's treating everyone for their treats. You can buy anything and then Troy's gonna pay for them. Pug's mouth fell open. You're kidding. We were pretty astonished, including Al and the guy at the cash register. Troy shrugged. I'm serious. That's, that's what money's for, isn't it? Anything in the store you want? Then he flashed his golden smile and said, No big deal. It was interesting to see how people reacted, as happy as a kid on Christmas morning. Pug has his arm full, so he was dropping stuff. The clerk gave him a bag. Adam accompanied Pug around the store for the fun of it, encouraging him to take this and that. At the magazine rack, they picked out Soldier of Fortune for Pug, and Adam got a couple of ninja magazines for himself. He struck a few martial arts poses and went around the store grunting in mock Japanese. I had to laugh, remembering about these moonlit escapades on the rooftops, the roses on the pillows. Rita was on a shopping jag too. I was just watching. Come on, Jesse, Troy encouraged me. It's her last chance. You know, 10 days in the wilderness and all that. Are you sure? It's going to be a lot. I nodded toward the big hitters. No problem. My treat, Star, Heather, Freddy. If we're going to have a good time on the river, we're going to need some supplies. I picked out the little junk food, but Star refrained. She was so conscious about what she ate. Her body was practically translucent. She... Not, not that she was anorexic. Star would eat as long as it was natural food and no red meat. She and I picked some lotions and lip stuff. And I talked her into a pair of sunglasses with some colorful loops to hold them on. It was a windfall for the fellow at the counter. Troy never flinched either. I'd never meet anyone that generous before. Heather thanked him and he said, For my friends. Freddy was kind of disappearing out the door when Troy said, Freddy, isn't there anything? There was a tone in uh, Troy's voice like he was, like his feelings were about to hurt. I knew he was intrigued with Freddy. He'd never met anyone like him before. None of us really knew who Freddy was. Freddy glanced back at Troy and he smiled his bright, shy smile. Sure, he said, thanks. He picked out a Hershey bar and a Coke and that was it. Freddy glanced back at Troy and he smiled his bright, shy smile. Sorry, it was dusk. Al drove us to the edge of town and we stopped at an old stone garage with a half inflated raft out front and a huge sign that says scenic San Juan River trips. Al turned around and said this should only take a few minutes. They're shut down for the season but they're going to do our shuttle for us. Drive the band the trailer and the end of the line and we're on the river. It, it wasn't a few minutes apparently Al was having trouble with his shuttle arrangements. We were having a good time in the van munching on junk food and visiting. The talk turned to the San Juan. What was it going to be like? 
pretty boring was the consensus after our wild adventure on the Colorado and Westwater Canyon. Adam's voice turned lunatic. Give me white water, I say. Give me white water. So we're supposed to do 10 days on a flat river? Troy said. And you know why? Yeah, Rita blurted. Because Al said there were where he could that's because Al said that's where he could get a permit that's right that's the only reason but that's pretty lame if you think about it why should hoods in the woods need a permit hoods in the woods is, is what they call their group Adam laughed that's about like bank robbers applying for a loan it's Al who needed the permit not us we can go anywhere we want Vegas Adam said just that fast Rita was shaking her head. Gotta be L.A. Miami, Pug insisted. I'm serious, Troy said. The keys are in the ignition. Our attention was immediately riveted to those keys and the sudden significance that Troy had given them. So Al left the van with all those teen teenagers, but then he also left the key to the van. With one stroke, Troy had turned our imagination up with the white hot. It was a priceless moment. Rita and Pug were going wild and Adam was lopping Troy at the back. I checked Freddy out. He was amused. Heather was awfully quiet with a nervous little smile on her face. But if she'd said anything, Rita would be ripped her face off. They looked around the van to each of us and settled down with the power of his eyes. We can go anywhere we want, I said softly trying out the idea. I thought how my dad would feel. He'd find out it wasn't be as tidy as he thought that shipped me off the program, where he could picture me in a certain box. He'd have to account for my feelings for a change. Where to, Rita said impatiently. Hey, I could show you guys around New York. Troy was shaking his head. That's why they'd expect us to do. That's what they'd expect us to do and think about how they fast they'd pick us up. We would steal a different car, Pug offered. Okay, everybody, now think about what the trailer we're pulling here. It's got two boats worth of gear and 10 days supply of food. I'm thinking if we could get off the roads and get onto the river, not this one, we could slip away and have ourselves a good time. There was plenty of noisy ab agreement about that. Hang in there, Troy said, and he hushed up. The question is, can we launch before they catch us? They'd never guess we're on a river, let alone which one. And it's October. There won't hardly be anyone on the river but us. Just like it was at Westwater. Rad on, Pug uh, thundered. We all knew Troy was about to name the river, but nobody had the slightest idea what it might be. Hurry, Rita said. Al would come any minute. Easy, Troy assured her. Remember, everybody, remember how Al said Skull was a Grand Canyon class rapid? Remember that? Sure, sure, we answered. Well, we did find in Skull. Heather took a swim, but big deal. And it was a blast. So why don't we run the Grand Canyon? There followed several moments of total silence. A rare event for the eight of us. It was an awesome thought, outrageous and inspired. There was a beauty to the idea. Grand, wild, and majestic. Drawing power and mystery from the canyon itself. You'd have to be awfully nervy to think you could up and run the Grand Canyons. As inexperienced as we were, no adults, just us. The calm broke into a babble of excited voices. We could do it, Adam cheered. Ten days of food, Troy added, and all the rafting gears packed on the trailer. Could we really do it? I asked Troy. Would we make it through? Like Adam said, we were awesome in West Water. Ah, uh, it sure would be fun trying. A thrill of fear went through me. Do we even know where to start? Sure. Lee's Ferry, Arizona, remember? Al mentioned that's where the Grand Canyon trip starts. We should have Al with us, Heather put in nervously. Hasn't he been down the Grand Canyon four times? Rita put her face in Heather's. Are you out of your mind? No permit, get it? You can't go legal. You think Al's going to help us sneak it? Forget Al. We have a lot more fun without him. Are they trying to sneak out the van and go to the Grand Canyon without Al? Heather was trying to catch her breath, but it isn't some kind of crime. What would they do to us? 
Suddenly, I could see myself in a cell, and just fast I felt all queasy. I'd been in trouble before, but never in jail. Everybody was quiet and looking to Troy. He shrugged. Some kind of larceny, wouldn't it be? I can't expect we would serve life prison for moving Al's van a couple of hundred miles and then taking his gear downstream. It'll be obvious we didn't intend to steal any of it. Adam broke a long moment of, to of tense silence as he shouted, Hey, wait a minute. This is perfect. Troy's last name is Larson, right? This would be a case of grand larceny. Everybody groaned and pug pounded Adam on the shoulder and then a few more times for good measure. Everybody groaned. Okay, so now. Put him out of his mystery. Misery, jeered Rita. Adam was mugging only a bit sheepishly. Get it, Rita? Are you sure you got it? Look, Troy said, eyeing the door of the office next to the garage. I was going to come out of there in a minute, and then this will have been just another bull session. He shook us over again, with blue eyes blazing, taking our measure, and when he got to Freddy, he stopped and stared at him. Freddy, Troy said. What do you think, Freddy? We haven't heard from you. The way he said it, and especially considering the timing, I got the idea it all hinged on Freddy, somehow. It seemed improbable but true, Freddy shrugged. For me, it would be worth, worth it. The Grand Canyon? Sure, you bet. Good deal, Troy said. Freddy, who was in the back seat, leaned forward. We have to make it to the river first. Cops will be looking for us up ahead, after Al puts the word, but I know some back roads through the reservation. Pug, who'd always seemed to dislike Freddy, roared his approval. Is this really happening? Is this really happening, I thought? We aren't just talking about it? Troy slid up the driver's seat and had Freddy trade out for Heather's up front. He put his fingers on the keys and said, It's an adventure. Take us to Lee's Ferry, Freddy. Rita reached forward and grabbed Troy's shoulder. So what makes you think they won't crush us there, hey, smart guy? Troy turned around and gave us a sly smile. In the middle of the night? Alright, that's it for chapter 5. And I will be posting the questions with the video.